the right to life and liberty. We're all created equally in America. And we're going to live here happily in America. Our founding fathers crossed the seas and built the new world colonies. The King George wouldn't set them free, so they fought a revolution. The American Revolution. For oh, we the people here decree, we've the right to life and liberty. We're all created equally in America. And we're going to live here happily in America. Hi, my name's Diane, and you're currently watching the Just Kidding Around show. We want to thank you so much for joining us. Each week, we introduce our home viewers to different crafts and hobbies that can be enjoyed by people of various ages. We invite artisans in from the local community to help give instructions on projects that can be done. And this week, we are re-welcoming Diane Gale. Hi, Diane. Hi, Diane. It's been a while. Yes. Diane has done many shows with us. Um, probably, what, maybe 15? I lost track. We did a lot, <laughs> but we haven't done any for couple of years. Yeah, for this year. Yeah. So it's great having you back. Diane is the uh, founder and director of the Mariah Art Institute in Olympia, Washington. So thank you so much. Great. Well, I have a, a wonderful program planned tonight. Great. Uh, this program is, uh, tonight can be done, uh, a clay project that can be done by all ages. Uh, young children, as young as two or three years old, Good. all the way up to elementary school age. Good, and uh, we look age. forward to that. Okay. And before we get started, we'd like to say that you do have our permission to set three quarters, so if you don't have your supplies, you can just enjoy the show the first time through and then assemble your supplies, and then uh, the second time you watch the show, you'll have all the supplies you need because you might not have these things in your home. Also, I'd like to start the show by saying hi to somebody very special. His name's Mr. Feeney. Hi, Mr. Feeney. I haven't seen him for a while. But a uh, big hello to Mr. Feeney and Lori, too. And is there somebody you'd like to say hi oh, to? Oh, I have to say hello to my granddaughter, Amber. Okay, can I all say hi to Amber, too? Hi. <laughs> Was she little bitty thing? She's four and a half. Oh, that's pretty little. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Great. With that, let's get started. Okay. We're well, to tonight we're starting with clay. And this clay is clay that comes from the earth. And it can be bought at a local um, sub art supply store. And a parent could pick up 25 pounds for about 7 or $8. Wow. Tonight we're using probably about $2 worth. <laughs> So wow. it's a very inexpensive project. First thing we're going to do is make out a flat pancake. And in one way, especially with young children, to help them so the clay doesn't get too thin for this project, you can get a couple of um, boards or little sticks that are about oh, a third of an inch thick. And you put those on each side of the clay. Then you can use your rolling pin. Um, it's not really recommended for cooking after you use it. So we use these dowels, which works just fine. And we're going to start to roll out the clay. Now, if a child is really young, you could have them tap it or pound on it to get the clay flattened out or help them roll it themselves. Now, an older student can ab you know, handle this real easily. When we uh, work at uh, making a, this project, I had in mind was um, to help us with the space curriculum that we were doing. And we can apply space to very young children or, or older kids. We have a lot of uh, projects. We've uh, done watercolor paintings and drawings so far, and we've been making these clay uh, pottery bowls that are very nice. Now, what we're going to do is we have some, uh, I bought this at one of the local uh, uh, bargain stores for about 50 cents, I think, 19 cents, and it works as a mold. And so what I'm going to do so is... So you can use a lot of different things as a you mold? You can use what, even in your kitchen, the one that I have for you over there is a pie dish. Okay. And that works out great too. And you're going to cover it with a piece of paper. I'm just going to lay it on so that the paper um, is very important when you're doing a mold so that the clay doesn't stick to the dish. Newspaper or whatever you have around is fine. But so, the clay, does the clay stick to the newspaper then? No, um, and if it does, it could burn off because when right. uh, we get done making these, it goes into a, a great big 
oven called a kiln. And it, it's a much hotter oven than you have at home. It goes up to a couple thousand degrees. Now, since our um, home <coughs> viewers don't have kilns in their homes, can they take the um, project that they've completed to the same art store where they Yes, the you can. Okay. There's places that will be very glad. Um, they uh, charge you piece by piece, and it's very minimal cost to get this glazed. This is also a great school project, too, for teachers, because it's such an easy direction-following idea. Anyway, we're going to get this nice and flattened out until it's the same width a thickness as the boards and sticks that we have here. I like this idea. It's very simple and then you can you can you know make it more sophisticated the older you get, okay? Or the older the children are. All right. So that looks about right. Maybe a little bit more. That and sometimes so with an, a child too, you can have them huh. um, stand up and get more of their shoulders mm. into the action. Yeah. So. Yeah, this could be some good exercise for a senior citizen, yeah. too. Seriously. Well, it's very relaxing to work in clay. Clay is very forgiving. It doesn't have to be totally perfect to make it a very mm -hmm. exciting uh, piece. So once you get a flat pancake, and yours looks just fine, okay. then we're going to take the um, mold with the paper on it. We're going to set our clay right in the middle of it, try to check the size. And then we're going to press down with our fingers. And so it makes a nice little curve. Now this is a very easy way to get a fairly nice project. Now we're using this to do a space theme inside of today, but you could actually draw a flower or a rainbow or fish. You can do any kind of drawing you wanted. But now, we've been focusing on space. And now, do you ever use water to smooth this? You could okay. use water to smooth it. Um, the clay was fairly wet tonight. If your clay is drier, you could squeeze the sponge really good after you've dumped it in, dunked it in water, and then you could smooth it. But tonight, we're just going to take and rub it with our fingers. Clay um, helps develop fine motor coordination with young children, and it is wonderful. If, if a child says his fingers aren't real strong, it's very hard for them to learn to print when they go to kindergarten. So, clay is one of the best mm. ways to develop strength in the fingers. So we do a lot of clay with young children and um, not worrying so much about printing skills, but getting their fingers strong enough to do the work later. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's also working with the mind and helping the creative process happen in the, the mind. We're finding that art can um, help develop the uh, neurons in the brain, and it really helps with intelligences. In fact, there's studies now showing that children who are exposed to arts education score 25 percent higher Is on achievement right? tests. Wow. Yes. So I highly recommend doing lots of art with mm -hmm. with all ages. Mm -hmm. So we get, get those this kids away from the television, huh? Mm -hmm. Because this is an active process. Mm -hmm. Television can be a passive process, mm -hmm. and, and that can be real important that you get the hands-on activities that they help the kids develop their, their muscle skills, but also their brain power and their confidence. Because it's, it's something that they can see that's actually constructed. And then we're going to take, now I'm using a, a pointed tool. I, I don't allow this for ages under maybe six years old, okay. unless I know them real well and they're very careful. Mm -hmm. um, you can um, poke yourself with one of these. So another tool would be just use a kitchen knife or I have a little plastic, knife, a little plastic mm -hmm. knife would work. And they're going to saw it. Now with the very youngest, you might have to help them guide, the, guide um, their hand, but have them always hold the tool and you at the same time. Then it's still their project. One of my rules of art is not to do the work for the child. <laughs> you might like it to look really nice right. because you've helped with it, but it, it, it empowers the child to do it all by themselves. That makes them, gives them a lot more confidence. And that's what we're looking for with children, is to give them lots yeah. of confidence. I think that's hard for a lot of parents. They want well, it is. I, I have seen parents that tried to do their children's <laughs> work, and it really is not the right choice. But, you know, that's, that's some of the choices. As I've seen because the child is develop, developing all of these skills and when they develop these skills it empowers and makes them 
wow, I can do that. Yeah. And that makes them into an I can do child instead of, gee, will somebody help me do it? Yeah. <laughs> Makes a lot of difference. And they know they're much prouder of something they've done. Oh, and so we, you know, we'll draw with children or work side by side, but we try very hard not to touch their work. Mm -hmm. Because I want a child to, when they go home, say, I did it. Not, mm -hmm. well, I did that, but the teacher did all of this, you mm -hmm. know. It's very important that the child leads the project. And this could be done with a two-year-old. They can sit and rub and rub and feel the texture of the clay. Mm -hmm. and, and just be delighted that they themselves made something uh, this concrete. Are different clays better for the younger children? Well, you want to always check, and the, your supply store will help you. You want to use completely non-toxic products. Okay. And there are clays that have different um, properties, properties yeah. in them that are, uh, that are not healthy for children. So mm. you do want to check. Mm -hmm. There are uh, plenty of um, options for, for using non-toxic mediums. So now, is this non-toxic? This is non-toxic, mm -hmm. yes. What kind of clay is this? This is Idaho Buff today. Oh, Idaho Buff. Yes, but there's several kinds that are non-toxic. But this is Idaho Buff. Okay. We often use uh, Coleman Raku or Idaho Buff. Yeah. Those are some of my favorites. Some of the terracotta clays are very nice, those brown clays. Okay. But this works well for glaze colors because when you fire it, it does turn out turn white, white. And then okay. it accepts the color really well. So you're going to come up with some kind of a product like mm. this. Now, it's good to rub the edges. You don't want uh, any little pointy pieces of clay that mm -hmm. later on will break off. So you can rub your edges, mm -hmm. and you can have uh, help with a sponge with this sometimes. But I, I do stick a little dryer on this clay because okay. sometimes kids put so much water on it, the clay yeah. starts going, <laughs> ah, this is, and it gets water. out of control because it, it can't maintain its shape. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have this is already. That's so easy. Right. Is that oh, easy or what? Easy. Very and easy. and it can become more sophisticated according uh -huh. to the drawing that we put inside. Now, how many times does this have to be fired? This will just um, have to be fired once with the process that I'm doing. Okay. And then I wanted to show you. I brought along one that was already done, that has dried. And with this one, I would wait um, okay. until. I probably let it sit for a couple hours, but the next the process that I would have you do, and I'll show you with this one, is um, we're going to paint it with some glaze. Now this is a non-toxic glaze. Now wait, wait, wait. So you said this would dry first, but you wouldn't bake it in the kiln. It would dry for two hours. Well, it's said? going. To, what I'm I'm talking about is actually the surface. You want it to get a little firmer, okay. so that when you go to carve in it, like we have these that have been carved in. All right. Um, we want to take these and uh, be able to carve into them. And some, sometimes it works a little better if it's a little firmer. Okay. So, but I'll show you both ways tonight. This clay will be fresh, and then I have one that's been dried, okay? So I'm going to take this glaze. It's a black glaze because, you know, outer space has a lot of darkness. Mm. There's no air to reflect the light. So it's quite black in space. So I'm just giving a nice thick coat, maybe a couple coats. This glaze is pretty thick tonight, so we'll let this sit and dry while we carve on the one that's already dry. I wanted them to see the process. So I'd let this sit out for probably a few hours and then carve it just because when it's firmer, it carves better. So I'll show you how that works. We're going to let this sit and dry. Boy, that didn't take long. It didn't either, no. did it? Okay. And then this one's already been glazed, and it has dried completely. You can tell the color of the clay is much lighter. Mm -hmm. And this is called um, uh, the dry stage just before you put it into the kiln. So okay? that's never been fired. Mm -mm. Now you Actually can take this, hard. and I'll show you what you can do. All right. We could do a, a, a uh, let's do a star maybe, okay. and you can carve it. And that's let's just see. your plastic knife. You're uh -huh. using. Well, this is actually a little wood tool that oh, I picked okay. up at the clay store. But you can carve right into it till you get it down to your clay base. Mm -hmm. And you can use all kinds of tools. This is a flatter edge mm -hmm. one. You can just use an old pencil, too. And we'll just put a nice big star in this one. Okay. So can you, could you etch with this? You could etch okay. with that, but the line would be much too smaller. Thin. So you want the Yeah, line. and um, it, it would, you could do small things, but you want something that pulls or carves the clay off. We'll just make a nice stars since we're doing space with these. Now do the children actually eat off of these plates? Well these are, um, as long as using non-toxic glazes they could, oh. 
But the idea when you do a pattern this detailed on a plate is that it's more for decoration. Okay. Yeah. But you know, it, as long as you're using non-toxic glazes and each uh, container of glaze that you buy, it will tell you it's non-toxic or right. if it is. If, okay. it's, if it's good for food, they'll tell you. And um, we have a, a wonderful line of uh, non-toxic glazes for kids. They were developed um, years ago by Lorraine Spencer mm. for the Seattle School District. Thank oh, goodness. Really? Yes, they wanted to, um, the, to be oh. able to have the kids glaze mm -hmm. things. And this is the story I was told. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so I think that's kind neat. of neat that someone local totally, developed the glazes yes. for us. Anyway, we're going to make a nice little star here. And we've had sunshine bursts. Maybe you would like to have the camera while I um, focus on the different designs and uh, patterns that have come. Maybe showing each so of them. What do you want me to do? Hold this for the camera? Yeah, so that you can see different right designs. That one was done by a, spree, a preschooler, and you can just see how they're holding that pencil and drawing that clay. A little bit, maybe. And so this could apply for that age group just fine. Thank you for getting that for us. So you want to carve until you have a nice clear line. Now is that hard? No, it just comes off real easy. You just have to repeat your okay. strokes. So a young child would A young child could do that, no problem. Yeah. <clears throat> Mix that funny sound too. And sometimes they'll just make marks in it and that's fine too because they all kind of look like exploding asteroids yeah. when they get done. Oh. This one, uh, the one over there is by a young child and you can tell this one yeah, that they get real experimental. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And How old and was that's the child that did oh, it was a preschool. I probably the three-year-old did a that. Three -year -old did yeah. this did you, uh, it's amazing that Pardon? Did the three-year-old roll out the clay themselves? They rolled out the clay themselves, really? but maybe we can always put our hands oh, on the side and help them. That's three-year-old. Yeah. Wow. Does that say Maisie on? I'm not sure, but yeah. Wow. You know, um, one of the things that because arts education is so wonderful, but we haven't really included in our curriculum as much no. as we'd all like to see it. But one of the things that amazes me as a teacher is how many times if you give kids tools and and some techniques, how amazing, really young children can do great things. Isn't I just, something? I still get amazed by yeah. it. Some of my best ideas come from the preschoolers. Would you like to maybe put maybe some uh, lines coming out to, so the star looks like oh. a shooting star? May I use this tool first? Yes, you sure can. Nice. You sure can. Okay. <clears throat> so we're always talking about, when we do the uh, talking about space, many mm -hmm. times we'll um, I'll go to the library or I'll go to a, a bookstore, but I'll pick up books on space. I've got a nice collection going now. But if a parent wants to inspire a young child, I, I know this year we've had a, a fun time with our young children. Uh, several tell me they're going to be astronauts. Oh, isn't that exciting? And just to explain this sub, like the sun is a star. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the sun it doesn't look like a star. It doesn't mm -hmm. have the star oh, look, right. you know, with the little <laughs> points. And um, the sun is a star is a great concept, and, mm -hmm. um, along with uh, the Earth being a planet, you know. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can inspire children quite young uh, for that love of learning about uh, space. And I, I do think space travel is something that the next generation or the in coming up generations will be traveling a lot more. Mm -hmm. They say that we'll even be vacationing on the moon. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> Which I would love to do. <laughs> would you like to do that? I think I could be, I'd be kind of scared, but I think I would try it. <laughs> Especially with their getting more of the, that knowledge and of how to do it successfully down. Mm -hmm. I was watching a program. At, do you know that the, the new space station that we've been building is going to be ready in 2002? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. So our, our space station will be done. And there will be people going back and forth. And the next thing you know, you know, it'll uh, the the price of that vacation will come down, and there will be people doing it. Isn't that amazing? This is an old book I found, which is really amazing. It was built. It was uh, it made in the, I think uh, printed in the 60s. 
wow. because it has things amazing. Have since then. Yeah, it, things have changed a lot. In fact, the first astronauts had to wear 15 layers of oh. clothing, and they had to be tethered, like with a rope, to the you know to do their spacewalks. Well, mm -hmm. now they have the jet packs on the back. And they fly around, mm. and and now they but they still have quite a few layers. I believe the number is about nine layers now. Mm -hmm. And I was watching where the first layer is. Uh, they have cool water uh, tubes running through the whole garment that the astronauts are wearing yeah, to I keep the body this. cold enough. Wow! And there's so many things to talk. You know, do you feel like the children are more excited about the subject matter if you introduce the art project first? Yes. Oh, just, yes. Because yeah. we draw, we paint, we do clay, and we talk about it in the mm -hmm. process. The teacher can tell different little ideas that can, you know, help inspire them. So, and I think uh, talking about craters and, and planets and mm -hmm. the fact that we live on a planet, I think those kinds of ideas help inspire. We we started out first talking about birds. Well, how did how did man learn to fly? We didn't always have airplanes, mm -hmm. and so we man first had to use his brain. We talked about the imagination. How did those birds fly? And the next thing you know, we invented airplanes, and then we kept moving on. And so teaching the history of how man learned and how man's thinking process mm -hmm. goes beyond what it normally uh, would be. Here's a nice one of the asteroid belt or the Milky Way, I wow. guess. Yeah. And the children, they love the um, to think about. Wow, we're on a we're on a ball. We're really yeah. on this planet. <laughs> we're, we're going around in space, and and I think it gives them that inspiration because that joy of learning and discovery and creativity is what a real education is about. Yes. Yeah. To be inspired to discover more. And when they're that excited, that young, it just yeah. just grows. Well, when I'm planting the seeds, I'm hoping out of my classes. Mm -hmm. A recent classes that I will have some astronauts someday. Here's mm -hmm. the planets, and we talk about the qualities of well, there being no air connection. on the planet, there being craters and volcanoes, mm -hmm. and um, that the weightlessness that's fascinating to the kids. Mm -hmm. And so um, we've had a lot of fun. We're actually doing a play on the landing of the moon. <laughs> And it, it gets to be quite interesting. But you can find so many books on space. However, I do think there is a need for more uh, space adventure stories for children. It's very hard to find. We find factual information, but no one has, there's a market there writing space stories because I can't find sci too many. Yeah, well, not what sci fi, just what it would be like an adventure in space. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be the alien thing, which the kids, of course, like, you know, mm -hmm. anything strange like that they like, but uh, a realistic. Uh, little story about you know adventure in space and what they did yeah. and the kids think it's so funny we talk about how they have to eat in space and how they have to strap them stuff down at night when they sleep have your kids read any of the alfred slope books uh no oh you'll have to check some of those out yes Oh. Several books on exactly that. Oh, great. Well, uh -huh. I need to know that yeah. because Adventures I've been looking and, and I, it's Alfred been Scott. very hard to find uh, uh, space adventure books uh -huh. that aren't, you know, out there just talking about aliens because, of course, we haven't found any other life right. yet. You know, yeah. it's a possibility. Yeah. It is amazing to think, though, of all the planets in the, our solar system and all the solar systems that we're the only one at this point that has, uh, you know, human beings that on it. That is exciting. And That's the variety. You know. That is true. Are we going to be able to finish this up now? We only well, have I think five we're more just minutes. about done. How do we get the dust? Well, you want to be careful. Party. You want to just gently kind of pull it off. You don't want the kids to blow the dust because, okay. of course, any kind of dust going into the body is not healthy. Okay. This isn't toxic. Do they ever wear? No, kids okay. aren't, won't really wear masks or anything, okay. but as long as you're not blowing it. And I talk to them about dust mm -hmm. and how we want to protect our bodies and not blow it and because okay. and, uh, the tendency is to blow it, you know. And right. but the idea is that it can be just um, uh, spread off to the side. Okay. Well, let me check this one. This might be a little bit wet. Oh, look at that. So it's That's starting to dry up, now. I'm, I'm going to show you what happens when you do it a little bit too early. But let's okay. just do, I'll do a, um, a rocket ship. It slides real nicely. Oh, that slides beautifully. Yeah, but you've got to take, it takes a little more effort. You've got to take and um, the problem with this technique with young children is they go too deep and you end up with a hole. Oh. So you want to let it so they have to carve it a little more. Mm -hmm. But you certainly can do it this way. And we'll do just a little rocket ship here. Whoops, that looks a little curve. And then we'll put some little fire out of the mm -hmm. rocket. Uh, booster 
whatever those are. I don't know technically too much. You know, we have um, a space camp that kids, when they're older, can go to. Mm. My little four-year-old granddaughter, of course, mm -hmm. is part of this program, and she saw um, uh, the space camp on television, and she says, Grandma, I want to go there. Go there. <laughs> and I said, we have to wait till you're older. She says, well, the big kids mm. will tell me what to do. <laughs> she All wants to go you. now. So it is easier. The older child could do this while it's wet. And what you would do is carve out, you can put some little That's stars, some yeah. yeah, and you can make a shooting star. They're really into shooting stars for some reason. They like that idea that a star can move. Put a little bit of a spot right there. Okay. So you would let this dry, mm -hmm. and you, there are some other choices. You could put color into this if you wanted after it dried with another color of glaze, which we've done on some of them. Would you just paint that in there then? You could paint that in there, mm -hmm. but I would wait till the whole thing dried. Okay. And then you could make air little... Dry before right, you, okay. air dry it. Mm -hmm. And you could make little um, asteroid belt. <laughs> So it's so fun to take a subject like space mm -hmm. and use books, use your imagination, and use your creativity. And there's our project. And then we fire it. Then you fire it. You take it to your local um, art supply store. I know we have one here in Olympia, but mm -hmm. they are uh, throughout areas. Um, and they'll probably this would probably cost about fifty cents to fire. They hmm. won't. It wouldn't so cost and you much. only fire it once. Yes, this particular so method. So if you're going to add color, can, can we look? I don't know if the camera people have seen these because we're getting ready to close. But can, can we show this this example? That one was mm -hmm. um, done with a yellow glaze, and but then the, a okay. clear glaze was put over the whole thing. And that was all done before it was fired. Yes. And this only has to be fired once. Right. And that is another oh. advantage. Oh, for, isn't that pretty? For a, a public school teacher, this is another advantage mm -hmm. using the etching technique. So that's a, com is that a Comet and I, Saturn? Yeah. Do you know the name of the child that did this? Um, this was oh, oh, one, the oops, excuse me, I was okay. looking for the name, but this was one that was left last summer, and oh, there was no name was on it, so I couldn't sure contact it. <laughs> so I just use it as a sample. Well, they'd be surprised when they see it on television. Yeah, and if they find, if you find, if this is yours, come to Mariah on Art, and I will give it to you, because it's too precious to let go of. Oh, it's such a nice sample. Anyway, so colorful. And then these up here, I love this one done by the little three-year-old. You can see, so you can oh. do a very sophisticated uh -huh. for the older elementary student, uh -huh. and then you can also do the preschool. Thank you Looks so like much for joining us. Thank you, Diane Gale, and thank you to our audience. Bye-bye. Goodbye, Mr. Feeney. <laughs>